you are just such a beautiful human. I've heard your story. I'm so in awe of you. I just adore you and this beautiful yoga studio I can believe you created called Retreat, Retreat Yoga. So Pru, I want to know all about you and your story. Like, tell me all about Pru. Oh God, where do I start? That could be a long story. Um, I guess I um, grew up with four older brothers and they've all got degrees in science and maths and um, engineering and all that sort of stuff. So I sort of went down the science path and um, did engineering and information sciences and became qualified as a sort of advanced mathematician, which is a bit weird looking back. Um, and then after that I sort of moved into Telstra and I did a lot of senior project manager, managing work um, in a process management methodology where you sort of um, improve processes across the company and get things working better basically. So very analytical um, thought process. And then my husband and I decided to travel for a year, so we just took a year off, which was excellent. And in that time, I thought, I've got to be more creative. It's, I've got this creative desire. And at the time, I think maybe I'll be a florist. I didn't know what it would be, but I knew it would be something. So after our trip, we thought we would start our family. And so we got back to Melbourne, and I um, started, uh, we got pregnant, and I started a photography business. So I, my dad was a photographer, and I just thought everyone took photos. It wasn't to that trip that I realised that um, I loved photography. I took thousands and thousands of photos with my film camera. And so after that, I thought, yeah, it's definitely photography. I'm passionate about it. I love it. So I started my own photography business and did that for the last 10 years. And I left Telstra. Luckily, we was even able to get a redundancy, which was really excellent when I was opening up that studio. And then 10 years later, um, we have <laughs> the Retreat Yoga Studio, so um, I grew into loving yoga again. I actually, I don't know if I've told you before, I had a full pelvic reconstructive surgery after my babies, yeah. So it took me years to come around to do that. Um, so my youngest was probably seven, and but the damage was done at birth, at my first. Um, and once that was done, I just thought, oh, that's it, I'm getting back into yoga. So I'd done Pilates for years. Um, but then I thought, no, I love yoga, I'm just going to saturate myself with it. So I did my teacher training and really absorbed and, you know, changed everything. What I put in my body, what I did to my body, what I put on my body, how I used my body. Um, and so, and then it just sort of grew from there and I started teaching yoga just to friends and family and um, mums from school and all that sort of stuff. And then I had to move out of the house and we had a dance studio and a local hall and then we opened the retreat. So has yoga always been your passion or did it become your passion? No, no, it became my, it became my passion. Um, I, 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 I've always loved it, but I think, I think when I was growing up, because I had this desire to, um, which sounds terrible and so non-yogic, <laughs> to, to sort of show that just because they're boys, because they had four big brothers, they were older, they were male, it was kind of like I'm the little girl, this you know, cute little thing at the time. Um, I thought, well, I'm just going to show that I can do it too. Yeah. And that was my, wasn't my passion, but I had this desire to show that I could do it too. Wow, so like a competitive side. I guess it might have been, but I'm not competitive at all. I think it was more... I'm not, I'm not sure where it came from. I think I just really thought my brothers were super awesome as well. <laughs> so I kind of wanted... I didn't want to be the little girl. I wanted yeah. to kick the footy and I wanted to have a science degree and I wanted to do engineering. And, um, so I've always been surrounded by guys, so brothers and then um, doing engineering. I think there was four females in my year, so it was just very sort of male dominated. But I loved, I loved yoga. I went to India when I was younger because um, I loved it, but I didn't even do yoga there. Like wow. it's, it was definitely a spiritual sort of thing as far as a 20 year old goes. I had all my beautiful crystals and all these beautiful things I bought in India all around my room. So I was kind of doing like the hippie, the hippie thing when I was in my 20s. But um, now I didn't, I loved it, but I was never, it wasn't a continual thing until I was a bit older and then it became um, something I practiced and something I loved and I got the hook, like I knew just something amazing was happening. Like it really does give you that, um, not just flexibility and strength, but it, it changes how you behave, it changes it who you are. And it gives you this sense of freedom and, and it, it opens up so many doors to, there's just so much, there's just so much more. 
and you can notice it when you don't do yoga from when you do do yoga like even in your body like you're kind of just like a little snake <laughs> you're just so bendy and stretchy yeah. so yeah absolutely yeah. it's amazing so how what was the thing that you did to leave Telstra to start your passion like what made you just go you know what this is what I'm going to do and I cha you change from a corporate environment to something that you knew within your soul that you really wanted to do. Yeah, um, I guess, well I guess it was that, it was something in me that I just knew I really had to do but I've always been good at listening to, to that, to the intuition or the, you know, internal guidance, whatever it is but I, there's a voice and it's, it's me mm. <laughs> speaking to me and I tend to listen. And I, I kind of always have. So, and it was the same with the studio. I, I never intended to open, I never intended to open a photography studio, but I never intended to open a yoga studio either. And it was just this something in me just said, you know, well, deeper calling. That's yeah, right. and, it, and that's right. So it was, mm. it's not like I can say it was a dream come true because a lot of people say, oh, it's such a dream come true. It wasn't my dream, but it was a calling. Yeah. It was, I was called to do it. It feels very natural and very easy. and. It's been my saving grace. Like the community is just mind blowing. It's all about the community as it well. It is, and it's different to other yoga studios in that sense that you don't come here and there's not all the beautiful people, and it's you know it's just normal. They are all beautiful people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yes. I mean, some yoga studios are full of um, you know just people that are there to, to kind of be seen. Whereas here, just has such a loving environment. Everyone's always like, "Hi, how are you going? Yeah, What's going beautiful. on?" <laughs> it's just beautiful yeah. and the actual studio itself like, did you just walk in here and think this is it well when I walked in it was it used to be a fruit shop so it was all green it had lino floors dirty destroyed sort of um, the ceiling was extremely low and it was dark and it felt very grimy and dingy mm. and we went looking for a yoga studio but we saw this place was for lease and I just sort of thought it'd be cool if that was a yoga studio yeah. without thinking I would do it. I just thought it's close to home, it would be cool. Um, so we checked it out and I showed my husband and we really liked it but we just thought the fit out would kill us because it was such a big, mm -hmm. needed so much done. And then, but that planted the seed that maybe we do want a yoga studio. So then we did look at one other place and both of us were just like, if it's anywhere, it's that place. So it was almost like we didn't intend it, this place connected with something going on and it, it just had to be here as well. It wasn't, it wasn't different to that. Um, and so we made the call, took us eight months to do the fit out. It's beautiful. But it's, yeah, it's beautiful. We really put our heart into it. My husband painted the whole thing, not a furniture maker, made all the furniture. Yeah, made it all by hand. Not a single screw or nail, I want you to know. <laughs> so it's, it's amazing stuff. So he just thought instead of um, you know, asking a carpenter to build it or he could invest in all the tools himself and do it. So it was a real That's labor of love. Yeah. yeah, and it was amazing. So he spent so much time. So the furniture's spectacular. The heart that's gone into it, like even things in here my mother has made, like eye pillows and, you know, dad painted the windows. And it's been a real labor of love. So, yeah. But, yeah. but the community is... You can feel it through the energy. Yeah. You really can. It's and I'm glad cool. you say you feel that because my intention was always, it's never to be intimidating. It's so always to be friendly, kind, authentic, and just really open to everyone. Yeah. Everyone deserves yoga in their life. It's not, mm. it's not um, about, like I say in class, it's not about how you hold a pose, it's how you feel. Yeah. So that's, that's sort of what we communicate here, I believe. And I find with yoga, when I close my eyes, and um, I learned this from the Awakening series, which I've done, if I close my eyes during yoga, I don't look at what everyone else is doing. I just, it's my own practice. And yes. sometimes I'm like, oh wow, you know, she yeah, can do progress. I can't do that. Yeah. But if I just go internal, it's just amazing. Yes. And once you once you can do that, once you've got that little hook, your practice just excels because yeah. you're not worried about the external. It's all about you, and then you can move deeper. Yeah. yeah. What are, What are some things that people could do at home if they don't do yoga? Because I've always been that person that's dipped in and out. Yes. So. Yeah. For somebody that's never done yoga and looks at it and goes, oh wow, I wish I could do that, or you know, they've got a little bit of a calling but are just too scared to take that jump. Is there anything that they can do at home that you recommend just to start their yoga process or start getting into it? I guess it depends on what sort of yoga they're interested in or what their bodies are. I think the main thing is 
listen to what your body seems to be telling you. Yes. And it doesn't always has to be have to be something that you think is going to feel good. Maybe you know your body's telling you something else and it's not yes. something you want to do. <laughs> um, but it's about listening to that. So there's, you know, obviously the yin sort of postures, but then which is, you know, more about lengthening and releasing mm -hmm. um, and getting into the connective tissue. But then the other yogis are going to build energy and energize you for the day. Mm -hmm. So depending on what you're all build strength or stability. So um, like I say, so we've got a few of the older um, students here, and I say, May, we want to be able to you know, reach the top shelf, do our shoelaces up, and balance without falling over. Like, they're out. Can we talk about Tom? <laughs> this man, like, I did a 21 day yoga, and he was like by my side nearly every single time. Yeah. He comes every day, doesn't he? Yeah. And his wife. Yeah, they're amazing. They're beautiful. They're amazing. Beautiful. Yes. It just shows that no matter what age someone is, yeah. like anybody can do yoga. Absolutely. Anyone. Absolutely. Yoga yeah. is for everyone. And a lot of people sort of say, but I'm not flexible or I can't balance. But then that's, they come to yoga. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it's for. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's not about, it's really not about what happens to your body, the strength and the flexibility. That's a side effect. Um, what you really gain, and, and as as you stay with it a few times, you do get that hook, and then you realise everything's everything's changing. Yes, so many doors are open to yourself. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So, Pru, what uh, do you practice gratitude? Yes, yeah, every day. I try to practice every day. I also get my sons to try to practice every day. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really beautiful. What are three things you're grateful for right now? Oh, my. The beautiful community here, number one, like just amazing. Um, my amazing husband, who is just all in. <laughs> he's so, like he's not involved with the studio other than the, the setup of it, but he's fully there supporting the back end for me, and he works for me. Um, so, and obviously my boys. I feel like I'm copying out my family. They're all three in my family. Um, but I love, one thing I'm really, so my boys are divine. They're 13, 11, they're super cool humans. Um, and they're really independent, like they're good souls. Um, and loving. But my, something I sort of turned to my husband the other day and I just said, how lucky am I that my, my work is my self-study? Like is my, everything I invest my time in, it's, it's all my own personal growth. Yeah. Where so many people struggle to find their me time. And they say, I want to get to yoga, but I can't find the time where mm. my work time is my me time. That's so beautiful. It's just bringing, and the same with the photography, bringing together sort of what you love, what you're passionate about, and natural abilities. If you can bring that together and make it your job, mm. then that's happily after. It is. Yeah. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Because then you don't need to go home and come home from a corporate job and then read all your books and do your meditation. Yeah. Like you're kind of doing that every single day and you're teaching people yeah. as well as teaching yourself. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. So is there any book that you would recommend anyone would read? Oh, um, God, my, my, my shelf is <laughs> I know, because you're always reading passages to us yeah. from your own, which is amazing. It's so... It just gets down to your soul. Yeah. So. Oh, there's so many, and right now I can't think of any, so I'll just go with what we use today. Um, the Radiant Sutras. So they're um, really beautifully written, and um, and I must admit though, there's, it's not so much a book I read from cover to cover. It's more something I share in a yoga class. Mm. But the different verses. Sometimes you flick through and you think, no, nothing's resonating, which is really odd because usually you'll find something in most books. Mm. But it's one of these books that you open something you have read before that didn't resonate, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, <laughs> they're really, they're an amazing, um, they're amazing verses um, and meditation practices, and yeah, so that's really good. But at the moment, I'm reading, um, okay, it's in my bag, um, Why the Cage Bird Sings. Ooh. Yeah, so I can't say her name, Angeline, um, you know, Oprah's friend. What's her name? Yeah, um, 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 Maya Angelou. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm reading her at the moment. That's gorgeous. Well, I only started, I know we'll get a little um, deeper soon. Um, what? What Amy taught us, I just finished, which was a book about um, resilient breathing, and that was really a lovely book, very sort of matter of fact, but it was about a mother who lost her daughter, and she's a specialist in grievance counseling, so she actually had to put it all into practice. So it's what she learned um, having gone through that herself. So yeah, that was a, that was a good amazing. Book. I recommend any of them, so thank 
Okay then. <laughs> so Prue, what's next for you? I know I always hear you learning and growing and developing. What's next for you? Um, well, I've got the retreat coming up in Bali, so oh. the yoga retreat, which will be amazing. Um, so I've put a lot, a lot of that, a lot into it, but a lot of self learning into it. I sort of use these excuses as I sort of set a deadline with nothing planned, <laughs> and then I work out what I would love to be able to offer, and then I, you know, learn it or discover it and apply it and stuff. So I've done lots of courses and the emotional anatomy um, stuff that I was talking yeah. about. So I'm incorporating that into it, working through sort of like the different energy centers, um, working out where we might have blockages or blown open or closed, um, and then really going deeper into what might we be holding in our bodies that movement isn't fixing, diet isn't fixing, um, you know, the, the functional, you know, build of our body is, mm. you know, isn't causing the issue. So then realizing that it's probably an emotional thing and trying to delve a little deeper. Um, and That's yeah, get to the cause. So if we can identify the cause and then start to put some simple actions into place to address that, mm. then maybe that pain in our body or that part where we just feel stuck all the time, even though we've done everything to mm. improve it, all that weight we can't lose, maybe um, then we can start to resolve it. So if you can't find the root cause, you can do as many diets or exercises as you want, but it's yeah. just going the pattern's going to repeat. So it's about mm. trying to break the cycle, get to the root cause, make some changes, and allow our yoga practice to take us further. So I think more of that. Yeah, I think I'll start doing a lot more emotional um, anatomy work, but through the yoga. Yeah. Maybe workshops and stuff and sharing it more with the community. I just want to acknowledge you. I honestly think you are so beautiful. I tell everyone about you. And Prue from Retreat Yoga, she blah blah. I'm like, I think you're amazing. The community that you have created here is gorgeous. The studio is beautiful. You know, just its energy as well as the actual yeah. look. It's just stunning. Um, and thank you for making the world a better place. You're just really beautiful women. And we are so glad to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Give the time. Aww, give me a hug. Oh, gorgeous girl. Here we go.